Orbit's instructions for the Yard Enforcer are not very good. This will save you time and help to use the motion activated sprinkler effectively. Set the dial on the motion sensor to the off position. Push here to release the battery tray. If the battery tray is stuck, pop it loose with a large blade screwdriver. Install four AA alkaline batteries into the battery tray. Insert the battery tray into the motion sensor. It only fits one way. Note that one side of every connection will have a gasket. The goal is to tighten the connection so that the gasket compresses against the side that doesn't have a gasket tight enough to make a seal, but not so tight that it distorts the gasket and causes a leak. Connect the riser to the electronic valve. I'm starting to feel some resistance at this point. And I'm going to turn it so that it's positioned like that. To detect smaller animals, mount the small bracket onto the electronic valve. It just snaps into place. Remove the large bracket from the motion sensor. Take care not to lose the washers. Install the motion sensor onto the small bracket. Before tightening it down, notice that the motion sensor can be adjusted for line of sight. Pointing too far down, it likely won't see anything but the ground. I recommend, for starters, to point it straight ahead and then tighten it in place. I want to detect the deer that are eating my garden. I've reinstalled the large bracket back onto the motion sensor and I'll remove the small one. I'll place the large bracket onto the top of the riser. It should be pushed down all the way against the riser so there's no gap here. The line of sight is also adjustable on the large bracket. I'll adjust it so that it is pointing straight ahead. Before connecting the sprinkler head to the top of the riser, let's talk about how to adjust it. When motion is detected, the electronic valve will open and it'll allow water to flow up to the sprinkler head where it makes a turn through this tube and it comes out this hole at the front of the tube. There's a diffuser pin that turns in and out. It adjusts the distance of the spray and the shape of it. There's a distance adjustment knob on top of the head with a plus and a minus on it. When the knob is turned, it changes the angle of the deflector shield. And this also controls the distance. These adjustment clips will determine the area that gets sprayed with water. The trip pin will go back and forth between these stops. Of course, it's spraying out this way, and then it'll spray whatever range you set it to. If 360 degrees of rotation is desired, flip up the trip pin and the head will spin completely around. I'll keep the trip pin up and turn the sprinkler head on top of the riser. 
And then there's like kind of a square nut down here, which you can turn until it's hand tight, snug. Notice that there's two ridges on the plug. Insert the plug this way to connect the motion sensor to the valve. While setting up the range and aiming the motion sensor, turn off the intelligent sensing mode. Set the dial to the off position and hold the 30 minute water cycle button down for about 20 seconds. You'll hear a click and that will be the valve opening. And then you'll hear a second click, which will be the valve closing and turning the water off. There's the loud click. I'll release the button. Let's wait for the, there. The valve just turned off and then there'll be a third quieter click. Kind of hard to hear. The duration button controls how long the water sprays from three to 10 seconds. Turn on to the lowest setting for setup purposes. The range dial adjusts the distance that the motion sensor reaches. Max distance is 40 feet. The manual recommends increasing the setting for small animal detection and lowering it for larger animals. I'm gonna set mine for mid-range to start. The 30 minute button is for using the sprinkler. If you push it, there's a delay so you can get away from the unit and then the sprinkler will run for 30 minutes and shut off. The unit can be set to operate for day only, night only, or always. And notice that there's connections on the riser. You could connect other sprinklers to this. And what would happen is uh, the motion sensor would sense an animal, the valve opens, and then water flows upward and out on hoses to additional sprinklers. And of course, this one. Connect the spike to the bottom of the valve. And you want to hand tighten that snugly, but not too tight. When you have the unit staked into the ground, you can move the sensor, uh, grab the riser, and you can just move it that way. If the sensor is on top of the valve, then hold on to this nut just above the stake, and you can swing the entire unit without loosening any of the connections. The motion sensor's field of vision is 120 degrees. Although the manufacturer doesn't give us any information about it, this is a typical pattern for a PRI sensor. This motion sensor is going to be most effective if you can aim it so that whatever creatures you want to detect are going to walk across those fingers, not into them. It'll be a slower response if the animal's coming in this direction. Also, uh, the further away and the further these fingers are spaced, the more time it'll take to pick up something walking across at these further ranges. I want to protect my garden. There's a high fence on this side of the yard and on this side. I have a net set up to create an easily removable barrier for large animals. I tied this netting to some PVC tubes. Drive two pieces of rebar into the ground. Then slip the PVC tubes over the rebar to make a temporary fence. At this spot, my house is here, and this is lower picket fence that uh, the deer are going to jump to come in to eat my garden. Ideally, I'd like to put the yard defender back here. However, uh, there's tall grasses that I don't want to put the a defender behind that, it'll block them or they'll be blown in the wind and maybe causing false alarm. So I have to put it in front of those tall grasses 
and the deer are probably going to jump this fence and they're going to come across this way and go crosswise across those fingers on the motion sensor. And if they do get smart and come around the back and come this way, they'll also be crossing uh, these fingers to make it uh, the most effective setup I can work out. Avoid pointing the sensor at streets where cars could come by and cause false trips. Also, if it's really hot outside, uh, these are going to respond slowly because they check the temperature difference between uh, the, the, the animal that you're trying to detect and the air temperature. And you know, the less difference there is, the longer uh, this will take to uh, detect movement. Adjust the stops to the desired spray area. I'm going to match the area that the motion detector is covering. I'm going to coax Melvin to leave the spray area. He won't like getting wet. I bought a double outlet adapter so I could connect two hoses to my faucet. Turn the water on. Trip the sensor. And adjust the water spray to the area and range that you desire. Turn the water off. Trip the sensor a few times and drain all the water from the hose. Walk back and forth in front of the 120 degree motion sensor radius. Stop when you hear the first click, wait for the second click, and then the third soft click. Count to eight, and then walk again, repeating this process to adjust and confirm the motion sensor's coverage area. Re-enable intelligent sensing. Then set to the final setting. Turn the water on. I hope you find this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find other videos. And thanks for watching.